SH Figure Arts No Way Home Spider-Man New Red and Blue Suit or Final Swing Spider-Man was released on the 25th of January as a premium Bandai web exclusive and retails for 7,700 yen or 85 US dollars up on Big Bad Toy Store. It's still in stock on pre-order and is scheduled for a late February release, which honestly isn't too bad of a price considering BBTS usually mark up imports considerably. I'm also a little surprised at how little attention this release has been getting. It hasn't been making its rounds on Instagram and I don't see too many reviews up yet, but I guess we'll start seeing more of it popping up towards the end of the month. Needless to say, it's a great release and probably my favorite Spider-Man out of the Figo Arts No Way Home series. Simple, clean and to the point but let's take a closer look at those details i never got the integrated suit final battle version personally i've never really been a fan of any of the tom holland costumes not because they're bad but i just do prefer more of a comic classic red and blue look nothing fancy just something that has that movie realism but also has that throwback to the costumes original comic book roots which is why i absolutely love this design and color combination. At the end of the movie, you see Peter finishing up his suit on his sewing machine as he takes it out for a spin in downtown New York. And essentially that's all that it is. Some spandex sewn together. Obviously you'd have to be an incredible seamstress to actually make something like what he did in the movie, but you get the idea. But what I'm trying to get at is that there is no extra black accents on his arms or boots. There's no fancy grid texture. It's a no fuss, no bells and whistles, plain, simple, smooth costume. And I love it. The webbing on the figure is sculpted in and panel lined nicely. And we get raised spider logos on the front and the back. Simple black logo on the front and red spider logo on the back. I love how they've paired a bright, vibrant matte red with a metallic cobalt blue. The metallic shine gives off that movie vibe, but the combination of both colors really screams comic book Spidey. I mean, I guess you could even use this as your comic book Spider-Man if you really wanted to. The Peter Parker head from the original Marfex comic book Spider-Man release works pretty well. Or maybe even your Marvel Legends Peter Parker head from the What If Wave, the Spider-Man with a cape, could also pair up really well. I don't have that figure, but it's probably a good combination. Anyway, speaking of your younger Peter Parkers, I really like the shorter, slimmer, but still athletic looking build, which is obviously what they were going for. He stands a tad shorter than Garfield and about the same height as Maguire, but has a more youthful look in terms of proportions. Again, the brighter color scheme also gives off that more younger first appearance look. We get two heads with this suit, though I don't know if we actually saw Peter with both variations. You get your standard eyes wide open head, black glossy rims and flat matte white for the lenses. And we also get a squinty eyes head as well. Both have that Tom Holland Spider-Man look design to it with the webbing more spread out than the previous designs. A couple of things that I'm not too happy with are the all red elbows. It should have been red on the outside and blue on the inside. Kind of breaks up the design a little. We also get a red rim around the back of the lower torso here. I get it, it's a continuation of the red webbed area here, but we don't really need it. Would have looked fine without it. And of course, one thing nearly all Spider-Man figures suffer from, the dreaded double spider logo on the back and how it breaks up the design. And the final swing version is probably the worst offender out of the three. Other than that, just be careful with the sides of your torso, bit of paint rub going on there. It's all in the crouch which is essentially what it all boils down to, right? Just how naturally and easily your Spider-Man figure can pull off one of these. Because every other bit of articulation, every other swing, wall crawl, low stance action pose will come easily if it can do the all-important four-point crouch, which is where we're going to start with. The head needs to look up enough so you get a horizontal plane of sight. It's not perfect, but I think it's pretty good. The neck peg itself is one of those angled, bent in the middle joints, so it's a pretty ideal setup. The head looks down just as well too, and you've got head tilts for days, thanks to that neck peg again, and a very useful independent neck piece as well. Head swivels side to side, no problems too. 
As you can see, the arms cross over with ease, not only useful for your crouches, but also all the web swinging action you can think of. Imagination's the limit. Arms don't bend back as much as they do forward, but you do get some really fantastic range going up. There's a bicep cut, of course, and amazing double elbows. Whew, look at that range. And there's some good range with the wrist hinge and your standard swivels as well. So you've seen the range of the ab crunch going forward and what it looks like on the back and uh, not the prettiest. I think I'm seeing double here. It's a shame about the double spider logo on the back when you have it in this position. Not really sure how they could work around that, but I also don't like how they've painted the bottom of the section of his back here red as well. I get what they were going for to kind of connect the webbed red part a little better to the lower back, but it just breaks up the design even more. Anyway, bending back isn't too bad, and the webbing extends all the way through the middle of the torso. Nice. Side to side twist is in the upper half of the torso and doesn't move at all at the lower half. Don't even try it, it'll probably snap, but I wish we had swivel at the waist too. Ugh, got paint rub already on the sides. Dang it, not happy about that. Legs move up pretty far, but the higher you go, the wider they get. Spider-Man can kick back and forward way past 180, Brilliant spread there, and side to side splits, yeah, pretty darn good too. Not 180, but definitely good enough. Squeaky thigh cut, double knees, foot goes down, foot goes up, the all important toe joint, and some very, very respectable ankle tilt. All in all, a solid 8 out of 10 for articulation as far as Spider-Man figures go. Would have liked the lower waist to have some swivel and it's a little ugly from the back, but other than those two things, I like it. Like the costume design, I feel like this release has been stripped down of all your iPhones, backpacks that we've seen in the past, albeit we don't see any of those accessories in the final swing scene, but I think we get a good split of hands, heads, and webbing effects here. Nothing fancy, but doesn't need to be. Spider-Man comes with two fists, something that I thought was a given, but Garfield Spider-Man proved me wrong on that. A set of wall crawling hands or crouching pose hands. A pair of finger curled wall crawling hands. I don't think we've gotten these hands before, but I do like them. Two web thwip thwippers and two web line effects, one long and one short. And to round out the hands, we also get a pair of web line holding hands, web line included. They've also thrown in a swappable pay for your Tamashi flight stands that plugs into Spidey's back. You'll need this tool to pry it out, but uh, you can also probably use your long gross fingernails if you have them. Cut your fingernails, guys. I still find it somewhat surprising that we actually got a figure of a version of Spider-Man that only got like 20 seconds of screen time and from two companies. Nevertheless, I'm really glad that we did. The final swing scene from No Way Home was probably the most satisfying ending that I could think of to a great trilogy of Spider-Man movies. Not only did it close a chapter on a version of Spider-Man that was essentially born out of another character's movie, but it also opened up another chapter to a more independent, more grounded Spider-Man that I grew up reading about and loving. This new final swing suit is a perfect reflection of Peter's own personal growth, and I love how figure arts have captured it in figure form. Sure, we don't get a Tom Holland maskless head like the Legends, and some could argue we don't really even need one because we don't actually see an unmasked Peter in the last scene. I'm happy with the accessories that we got. It's everything you need for a Spider-Man figure. That on its own has a classic design, excellent articulation, and again, just feels so simple and clean in the best way possible. Amazing Spider-Man probably has the nicer deco. Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man is probably more iconic, but for me, Final Swing Suit embodies the fun, youthfulness of a classic Spider-Man that I've always loved. And with that, thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the review, make sure you hit that like button and leave us a comment. Oh, and of course, subscribe if you haven't. I will see you all in the next one, probably Figure Arts, Dragon Ball, Android 20. But till then, have a good one. And as always, Yoshiko!